What's up, guys? Panic here, otherwise known as Panic Picnic. And today we are, easy, we are going to be reviewing easily the most anticipated movie of 2016. That's right, I'm reviewing Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This is a 100% spoiler free review, and I will only touch on things seen in the trailer and those and these posters for the movie that you're currently seeing. No plot points and nothing I feel would ruin your experience is included. Before I start, let, let, let it be known that I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I may be a little bit critical at times, and I have seen this movie twice, so I can at least give you, um, at least just to generalize how I think it is. That being said, let's get right into the review. Let's start with this basics. This movie takes place right before uh, Episode 4 and in between Episode 3, and it goes over how the Rebels acquired the Death Star plants. So, it is a Star Wars movie in that regard. But uh, outside of that, this movie comes off more as a fan fiction, really. Kind of one you would see on Tumblr. Um, it appears to differ from the Star Wars formula. And it doesn't even, inclu it doesn't even uh, include a scrolling sequence like how you would see in most other Star Wars movies. But it does still try to do its own thing. Um, it does this by, like, the reason I say it's more of a fan fiction, it does this by, uh, it, has, it has throwback characters that you'd see in other Star Wars movies and stuff like that. So it's like, it's fun little Easter eggs and stuff. But, and it does include basically everything that would make it a Star Wars movie, basically all the technology, all of the locations and stuff like that. They, they really do feel real. <clears throat> um, however, it has a really oddly formed plot, and using that with already established characters, it, uh, the plot makes the characters behave differently than they normally would, and that's just in my opinion. Um, they just seem a little bit awkward. I mean, hell, even like, they make Darth Vader make a pun, which is, it almost came off as a little odd. Um, also, the it, it does appear to be, it does have a lot more comedic aspects to it. Uh, to be honest, the writing is not the best, like, in terms of movie writing, um, but most of the characters are also forgettable. That's really where it really comes down to it. Like, in most Star Wars movies, you could easily remember who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, and stuff like this. In this one, it's almost kind of confusing what exactly everyone's motives and stuff like that are. Um... Also, in terms of scene by scene, um, the writing is, like I said, between the characters is not very good. With the exception of this guy right here, this little robot you'd see on the left that has their Star Wars Rogue One, a uh, Star Wars story December 15th sign, uh, that guy will easily become your favorite character. He is amazing, and that's the only thing I'm going to say about that. Uh, he pretty much makes every scene. If you see him in any scene, he's instantly going to make that scene and pretty much almost saves the movie, in my opinion. <clears throat> um... In addition to that, it suffers from poor... Most of these problems really come in form of the beginning. Uh, it suffers from really, really poor pacing that it does something and then you'll have like a 15-year time gap and then you're like, well, what was the entire point of that scene? What what exactly is going on now? Like it almost... The beginning really just... Like the first half of the movie almost leaves you confused at exactly what's going on. Let me just add a quick sentence here to drag the plot along. That's... Like I said, the plot is really not very good. That's really the biggest problem I have with it. But like I said, most of it really comes in uh, with the problems, uh, with the beginning. As the writing could use some work, as most of the characters are forgettable, including the the big bad guy. Like, oh, like you don't really know why they're doing what they're doing, and it's kind of confusing to an extent. Um, however, once it hits the middle, like once it becomes near the end, it becomes an entirely different movie. Basically, being it basically becomes the Star Wars movie you've always wanted. It has amazing action sequences. It has great sets, and overall, it feels like feels like an entirely different movie. It feels like this movie was either written by two completely different people and directed by two completely different people. Um, but all in all. Uh, this is a Star Wars movie I think you should see, but in terms of a movie, it's just okay. Uh, I give it a ranking of, I'm, I'm giving it a vague ranking of about a 65 to about an 80, as this movie, it, it's, like I said, it's okay. I think it could definitely do more. Like I said, um, most of the shortcomings of this movie comes from the beginning, but like I said before, I think this is a movie you should entirely see. I've seen, like I said, I've seen it twice. I saw it once on opening day. And I saw it again um, about, I think, last night with, a fr with a, another friend. Uh, I think if you do see this movie, I think you should also see it twice. Like I said, um, the plot is kind of rough. But once you see it again the second time, it's, it's pretty good. That's why I pretty much give it a little bit of a vague scale. Uh, when I first walked out, I was kind of disappointed. But when I saw it again the second time, I was like, you know what? That was actually not that bad of a movie. <clears throat> I was maybe a little too overcritical on it. 
All in all, I completely think you should uh, totally review it, and I'm probably going to lose some subscribers, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video, and I hope to see you guys in the picnic table. All you got to do to join it is to subscribe, and I'll see you guys. Bye.